class. Welcome to Advantage. I'm Dr. Scott Adamson, and today, hang on to your hats, we're going to talk logarithms. But I hope that after today it won't be such a scary word. I hope that you'll really understand what a logarithm is so that you can apply it in the courses that you will be taking. Now really, a logarithm is just a fancy word to answer this question. Suppose you had three raised to some mystery power and you knew that the answer was nine. What would be that mystery power? Well, we know that three to the second power is nine. Or imagine you had five raised to a mystery power and the answer was 125 and you wanted to figure out the mystery power. Well, we would think five times five is 25, times five again, five to the third power is 125. Or suppose you had two raised to a mystery power is 32 and you want to figure out the mystery power. Two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16, times two would be 32. So we know that two to the fifth power is 32. So about 500 years ago, a mathematician named John Napier was thinking about these kinds of things for a reason that he needed, and he made a way of thinking about it that involved logarithms, but it kind of evolved like this. The way that we might think about this is, we're looking for a power on a base of three that produces nine. So we would say this, there's a power on a base of three that produces nine. What is that power? That power would be two. Or in this case, we're looking for the mystery power on a base of five. So we would just say there's a power on a base of five that produces 125. And we know that that power is three. Or in this case, there's a power on the base of two that produces 32, and we know that that power is five. Now, maybe if these things were, had, had been invented today, this would be exactly what we would call it. We wouldn't call them logarithms, we would call them powers. But the reality is, they're called logarithms from about the 1600s on. And so we don't say power base three, we say log base three of nine is two. But what you might just think going forward is when you see log, just think, what's the power? What's the exponent on three that gives nine? What's the exponent, what's the power on five that would produce 125? Well, it's three. What's the power on two that produces 32? Well, it's five. Now, this log thing even can work with non-whole numbers. For instance, what if it said log base 10 of one one hundredth? Now again, what you're thinking is, what's the power, what's the exponent on 10 that produces one one hundredth? And we know that that power is negative two. Or, how about this one? Is there a log on a base of eight that produces one? What's the power on eight that would give us one? And we know that eight to the zero power produces one. Now, as you progress through your mathematical career, you'll also encounter a a beautiful number, a powerful number, a very useful number. The number is called E. And this number is approximately 2.71828, and it goes on and on. It never ends, never repeats. It's called an irrational number. Sort of like pi is an irrational number. 3.1415926, etc., etc., etc. The number E is such a number. And so often, this number E is a, a very useful way to model real life things. And so we might want to ask, what's the power on E that produces, I don't know, like nine? Now, of course, we wouldn't say power. We would say, what's the log base E that produces nine? And of course, we wouldn't even really say that because over the course of history, if you have a base E logarithm, it has its own special symbolism. It's a natural logarithm. And so we would say the natural log of nine. So when you see L in a natural logarithm, you can think log base E, or you can think what's the power on E that produces nine. Now, what is the power on E that produces nine? Now, let's just do a little estimation here. This number, 2.7, if you round it to all the nearest whole number, it's about three. So if you were thinking, what's the power on three that produces nine? What's the log base about three that produces nine? Or what's the natural log of nine? We know it's gonna be around two. It's gonna be around two. It's gonna be around two. Just ballparking it. Here's your challenge. 
grab your calculator or look on your phone app, see if you can find a button that has LN, and see if you can find the natural log of nine. And what you're gonna find, it's closer to, well, it's still an approximation, but it's closer to 2.2 than it is to two. But I hope this makes sense. If you think about E is around three, a power of two on three would give you about, about nine. So if we think about logarithms as just asking the question, what's the power on? We can start to do this for lots of input values, calculate the corresponding output value, and we can make a graph of a logarithmic function. So imagine for this case, we're going to do a base 10 log, often called a common log. So a, a power on 10 that produces x. We're going to input different values for x, and then we'll output y, and we'll plot them and just kind of get a sense of what this logarithmic function would look like. Let's start with negative 3. If x is negative 3, what this says is there's a power on 10 that produces negative 3. That says there's a mysterious power on 10 that produces negative 3. I hope right now your brain's going, huh? Because the reality is there is no power on 10. You can't raise 10 to any power and get negative anything. And so an input quantity that's negative is going to produce no result. This is just not applicable, not applicable, and not applicable in a logarithmic uh, setting. But what about zero? Can we think about zero here? Log base 10 of zero. Is there a power on 10 that produces zero? Is there an exponent on 10 that produces zero? Can you raise 10 to a power and get zero? I hope your brain's thinking about this right now because the reality is you can't get zero either. If you raise 10 to a power, you will never, ever, ever, ever get zero. So this is not applicable. In other words, in this graph over here, our input quantities can only be values for x that are greater than zero. We're not going to see anything happening graphically to the left or at zero. So let's start with some whole numbers. Let's start with one. What about one? What if x is one? Is there a power on 10 that produces one? That is, can we take 10, raise it to a power, and get one? Yeah, we can raise 10 to the zero power and get one. So we now have an input of one and output of zero. We know that this graph is gonna cross the x-axis, the horizontal axis at one, zero. What about when x is two? The power on 10 that produces two. What's the power on 10 that produces two? 10 raised to what power is two? Now this one's harder to do, but there is an answer. Uh, grab your calculator. Find your LOG log button, or look on your phone app and find a log button and try it. What's the log of 10? Uh, I'm sorry, a log of 2. And if you do that, you'll find that it's about, the, the, the power here is about 0.3. 10 raised to about 0.3 is 2. What about x equals 3? Power on 10 that produces 3. What's the power on 10 that produces 3? Again, use a calculator for this one, but you'll find that it's about 0 0.48. And then let's just go to 4. You'll start to see a pattern here. When x is 4, a power on 10 that produces 4, use your calculator and find out it's about 0 0.6. So here's what we see. We have the point 1, 0. We have the point 2 and about 0.3. I'm just going to ballpark it. It's about right there. We have the point 3 and 0 0.48, maybe about there. 4 and 0 0.6, so maybe we're just a little bit higher than that. Here's the reality. As x increases, as x increases, the power on 10 that produces that x is going to produce a number that's always going to be a little higher, but it's not going to increase very quickly. So what we see to the right of 1 is a graph that increases, but it increases ever so slowly. Now what about in between 0 and 1? We know that 0 does not apply, but what about values in between, like what about a 1 half? What if x was 1 half, the power on 10 that produces a 1 half? Now, use your calculator again, but what you'll find is the power on 10 that produces a 1 half is a negative 0 0.7. So at an input value of 1 half, 
we're going to get an output of about negative 0.7 right about here. And now I hope you kind of get the sense here, like imagine we did like a one-tenth or a one-one-hundredth or a one-one-thousandth. Let's do some easier ones, like a one-tenth. The power on 10 that produces a one-tenth. 10 to the minus one is one-tenth. So at one-tenth, we'd be down here at minus one. One-one-hundredth, the power on 10 that gives one-one-hundredth, 10 to the minus two. So at one-one-hundredth, we're gonna be way down here at minus two. And one one thousandth is gonna be minus three. And so the behavior of the graph in between zero and one is a very stark increase that we didn't see past one. But remember, there's no such a thing as an input value of zero. And so this graph just gets really close to that output axis, that y axis, but never ever touches it. So you have roughly the shape of a, of a logarithmic function. And I challenge you, try something other than base 10 and play with it and see what the graphs would look like.